and welcome to Essence TV. My name is Kari Seely. Over the next half hour, we're going to have a conversation with Tony Maloto, the founder of Gawad Kalinga, which is an incredible organisation that is involved in many countries around the world. This organisation has gone where many others have not uh, have failed to go and have not succeeded, particularly looking at making the issue of poverty history in our lifetime. This organisation, Gawad Kalinga, is operating in five countries and it is successful. I've actually seen it with my own eyes and it's such a delight to have Tony Maloto with us. Tony, thank you for your time. Thank you, Carrie, for the privilege to be in your show. It's great to have you here. You're only here for a very quick visit to Australia and we're really proud that you've come in on Essence TV. Tony, you started life in rather challenging circumstances. Why did you share your own journey through poverty with us? Well, I was born to a, a poor family uh, in, uh, in uh, central Philippines and uh, it was a struggle for me uh, to get a, a good education and uh, the break that I got was when I was able to win a scholarship in high, after high school to the United States as an American Field Service uh, scholar and later on I went to a university but uh, th this was just the the you know once in a lifetime opportunity that people like myself get because I was educated in a, a poor public school and uh, hardly you know dreaming that uh, that the world will open up to me one day and you went on to be very successful in your studies and then got uh, employment and were quite successful in business, weren't you? Well, I was, uh, right after university, I decided to follow the, the way of those who want to really uh, forget about uh, their past history of want. So I joined a multinational company and uh, tried to make a career and became an entrepreneur. But at a certain point in my life, around the time when I was 35 years old, I realized that you know money was not the source of happiness for me. I wanted to, I wanted something. Uh, perhaps I was just uh, cut out for something else. Maybe uh, so. That was the time when I started uh, searching for another path. Mm -hmm. So, what inspired your initial vision for GK for Gawad Kalinga? Well, it was actually my, my visit to Australia uh, when I was assigned here uh, to work for uh, an organization called Couples for Christ that uh, helped uh, the family life of, uh, of my countrymen who, who uh, migrate to other countries. We have uh, Filipinos in, uh, spread out in diasporas all over the world. And for five years, from 1990 to 1995, I would come to Australia about two to three times a year. And it was in Melbourne in 1995 when I had my road to Damascus you know, experience, when my eyes just opened up to the reality that uh, my people uh, were designed to really uh, uh, make something, they had the potential for excellence if they are in the right environment because uh, I did not see a Filipino who was a beggar in Australia and, uh, and, uh, but uh, in our country we would see strict children begging and uh, that uh, because of, uh, of poverty uh, my people were, uh, were living in subhuman conditions and they had no dreams and aspirations that motivated them to work. So when I was in Melbourne at that time, I decided that I should go back uh, to my country and, and uh, also do social engineering and provide them the kind of environment that will make my people discover that they have the, that the, the that, and use their skills and talents to improve their lives. So I work in, a, uh, in the, the biggest and the most troubled slum in our country uh, for out of school youth, for gang members, drug addicts. And uh, I discovered that uh, if we transform the home, the community environment, that uh, these young people will be, will be motivated to go back to school and the men uh, who were predatory would start to work. And that's, that was the, the whole concept of uh, Gawad Kalinga, to transform lives by providing them uh, uh, dignity and a decent uh, home and community environment. Mm. Were you surprised by early support of your vision for GK? 
Well, yes, uh, I suppose there's a natural goodness in people and then, and then the, the work has simply has to be, uh, have enough impact to really attract people to come. In fact, uh, the first volunteers that I had in 1998 from abroad came from Adelaide. <laughs> we had, I had uh, some Italian friends, you know, uh, from this, uh, uh, well, the Papalias and the Trotas who went to the Philippines and built the first multipurpose that uh, we had. And we also had uh, uh, Australian villages that uh, were built in Manila in the, in the most uh, remote areas of our country. And um, this uh, just allowed us to see, you know, the impact of the work. If, you know, that uh, when people see that uh, their lives are transformed because uh, it attracted those with the, with the resources, with the skills and the talent to help the weak and the powerless, then you just bring out the good in the poor, you bring out also the good in the rich and the, and the privileged. And, and somehow you, you create that kind of uh, bandwagon. And uh, we were amazed because then the, the corporations started to help and then the students from the university started to volunteer. And uh, now every year we get a stream of volunteers coming from the students and the young professionals from Australia. And uh, you have probably, when you went to the Philippines, uh, you, you saw some members of the Engineers Without Borders right. who have made it now uh, a tradition for them to, to volunteer with us every year. One of the strengths of the work of GK is partnership. Not mm. only people donating their money and their time to go and physically help build, but the partnership extends uh, within the community and it really is about empowering from within. Yes, and uh, because partnership multiplies resources, you know, we are we are into what we call creative leveraging. So uh, when people uh, uh, donate houses, you know, uh, then uh, it is, uh, uh, there is added value because uh, other people donate land. Uh, the, the poor themselves uh, put in their labor equity mm -hmm. and then the architects, the engineers provide uh, their professional services for free mm -hmm. and people build roads and, and provide water systems and, and electricity. And, uh, and others, uh, the, the, the uh, schools uh, uh, teach and, and provide technology. And so we're going to find out a little bit more about the extent of that partnership and also the support that you're getting even from government quarters and what you're doing with GK in other countries. Despite decades of economic development programs and foreign aid, millions of people in Asia still live in poverty. Gawad Kalinga, GK, is addressing that in building communities that are resilient and will change and make poverty history in our lifetime. We're going to be chatting with Tony Melodo a little bit more after this on Essence TV.